I may be a complete dork, but there is a reason that I love late 1st and 2nd century Christianity. You're reading along with writings that could very well fit in any Bible study class in a little old Orthodox church, and then bam, they say something that blows your mind. So let's explore if 1st Clement believes it is scripture. Welcome, explorers. In this video, we're going to examine the question whether First Clement believed itself was scripture. In some housekeeping notes as we examine this letter, first, Clement of Rome has been attached to this letter by Christian tradition, and Clement of Rome is listed as the fourth pope by the Catholic Church. But like many Christian books and letters in the first and second century, it was written anonymously, like Hebrews and the four Gospels. First Clement does not name an author, and the name Clement of Rome, again, was connected to this letter by later Christian tradition, just like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. First Clement is also known as the letter of the Romans to the Corinthians, but in this video I'm going to say Clement because I like tradition, and letter of the Romans to the Corinthians is too wordy, and it may confuse people with Paul's letter to the Corinthians, which will be in this video as well. So as I say Clement, I hope that you know that I know that Clement is not the named author, but was attached by later Christian tradition. But Clement of Rome is not a bad guess, because he was the bishop in Rome when most scholars believe First Clement was written. So let's dive in. Clement in his letter uses a lot of scripture. You could easily read 1 Clement in a single sitting. It's not a huge letter. And in this letter, one scholar counts 166 scriptural quotations. Specifically, Clement likes to quote from Genesis, Isaiah, Psalms, Proverbs, but there are others like Numbers and Daniel and Job. Clement builds his arguments in this letter absolutely upon the Old Testament. And Clement has a very high view of Scripture. We see this specifically in 1 Clement chapter 45. In this chapter, he makes four claims of Scripture that show his high view. First, he calls them the Holy Scripture. Holy, as an adjective for Scripture, is a very high compliment. Second, he states that Scriptures are true. The Scriptures are not nice or helpful or just has some good stuff in them. The Scriptures are truth, and they teach the truth. Third, the scriptures are given by the Holy Spirit. The scriptures are not just a creation by humanity when some people just jotted down some nice religious ideas. Instead, God was involved through the Spirit in the creations and writings of scripture. And lastly, Clement states that there is nothing unrighteous or counterfeit in the scriptures. The scriptures are an act of the Holy Spirit. They are holy and true, and they are never unrighteous or counterfeit. That is a high view of Scripture, and as we will see, First Clement writes that itself could meet these criteria. But before we can simply compare First Clement to these criteria, we must first address the question, does Clement see any other book outside of the Old Testament as Scripture? Well, throughout 1 Clement, Clement shows a knowledge of some New Testament books or ideas, but things do get a little murky here. There is a famous Oxford Society of Historical Theology publication called The New Testament in the Apostolic Fathers from the early 20th century that, let's say, gives the benefit of the doubt to these writings, and it connects many passages in the Apostolic Fathers to the New Testament. First Clement is considered an apostolic father, and the Oxford Society argues that Clement could be using the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, multiple Pauline and pastoral epistles. They see the New Testament all over First Clement. But in a later, more reserved study can be found in the book, The Reception of the New Testament in the Apostolic Fathers, which argues that Clement is using Corinthians and likely Romans and Hebrews. And First Clement shows a knowledge of the Christian Jesus tradition, but it is unclear if that Jesus tradition is from one or more of the four Gospels or not. But again, First Clement was writing around 95 CE, so having Corinthians and probably Romans and Hebrews, that's pretty cool in my opinion. So how does Clement feel about these books? Well, he never directly calls Corinthians, Romans, or Hebrews scripture but he does make one remarkable statement regarding Corinthians. In 1 Clement chapter 47, Clement calls Paul blessed and an apostle. 
Calling Paul an apostle is significant because First Clement is one of the earliest expressions of the doctrine of apostolic succession, which is an idea that the church's leadership and doctrines should be traceable to the apostles. If a leader or teaching can be traced to the apostles, it's good. This idea becomes a hammer that is often swung in the theological and leadership controversies in the first few centuries of the church. And Paul, being an apostle, gives him a lot of credibility in Clement's eyes. And then Clement goes on a little further, stating that Paul wrote Corinthians in the Spirit. Remember, Clement has also stated that the scriptures were given by the Spirit. So he does not flat out say Corinthians is scripture, but the Spirit was involved in Corinthians just as the Spirit was involved in the Old Testament. And there is also one fascinating quote that we must mention when asking does Clement believe there are scriptures outside of the Old Testament, and that comes from 1 Clement 23 verse 3, and it says this, Let the scripture be far from us where it says, Wretched are the double-minded, those who doubt in their soul and say, We heard these things even in the days of our fathers, and look, we have grown old and none of these things have happened to us. End quote. Now, the Greek word used in verse 3 translated as scripture is graph, and that can be translated as writing as well as scripture. But in 1 Clement 45, Clement writes, Holy graph. So we know he uses the Greek word graph to specifically refer to scriptures, and that is important because this quotation of graph, which begins, wretched are the double-minded, is completely unknown. It does not come from the Old Testament, and we don't know what Clement is quoting. It could be a defective copy that he has of an Old Testament book, or it could be a separate book entirely that is not in the Old Testament, and that would be huge for our discussion here. And it is possible that Clement is using graph with this unknown quote to mean writing, but it is equally as possible that Clement is using it to mean scripture. So we must admit that it is at least a possibility that Clement believes there are scriptures outside of the Old Testament. And as we have stated, Clement quotes Corinthians and most likely uses Romans and Hebrews throughout his letters. And just quoting or using these letters shows at least some regard for them. So to recap, one, Clement believes scriptures is given by the Holy Spirit. Two, Clement states clearly that Paul's letter to the Corinthians was written in the Spirit. Three, Clement quotes some unknown book and calls it in Greek graph, which could be translated scripture. And four, just the use of Corinthians, Romans, and Hebrews shows that Clement has high regard for these letters. And with this background, let's read 1 Clement 63, verse 2. For you will give us great joy and gladness if you obey what we have written through the Holy Spirit. The we here is probably the church in Rome, but here Clement is directly claiming that this letter was not written by the church alone, but that the Holy Spirit was a part of the penning of this letter too. Clement is claiming that this letter is, in at least some fashion, a work of the Holy Spirit. Now let's put this belief that Clement is writing in consort with the Holy Spirit with the view of Scripture revealed in his letter. Clement believes scripture is given by the Holy Spirit, and here we have one really big similarity. The Spirit gave the scriptures to the various authors, and the Holy Spirit led Clement in this letter. Two, Paul wrote in the Spirit, so the Spirit can work with authors after the close of the Old Testament, which makes sense because, again, Clement believes the Spirit worked in this letter as well. Three, Clement again quotes a writing with authority that he calls graph, which can rightly be translated scripture. That is not from the Old Testament. And also, in 1 Clement 63, he calls every book studied in 1 Clement a leader of our souls, showing a high view indeed to this unknown quote and to Corinthians, Romans, and Hebrews. And four, just by using Corinthians, Romans, and Hebrews in such an authoritative manner reveals Clement's belief that authoritative books can be written after the Old Testament. So, does first Clement claim to be scripture? As much as, much as I want to say yes, it's just unclear. He never calls Corinthians or Romans scripture, and with the unknown quote, graph could be rightly translated writing. 
but what do I believe? Maybe some of you online theologians can straighten me out, but what I believe is that 1 Clement sees itself on the same level as Paul's letter to the Corinthians. He states that Paul was writing in the Spirit, and he claims that we are writing 1 Clement in the Spirit, and that in itself is pretty remarkable. But whether Clement sees itself as scripture or not, there are no doubts that some pockets of Christianity saw 1 Clement as scripture. It is quoted by multiple authors as biblical scripture, and it is found in the famous 5th century Codex Alexandrinus as part of the Bible. So let me know in the comments, am I the only person that finds it fascinating that Clement claims scripture comes from the Holy Spirit, then Paul who did write a letter that ended up in the Bible was written by the Holy Spirit, and then Clement says what he has written was written in the Spirit as well, just like Paul and just like all the writers of scripture. That blows my mind and I hope that you find it interesting as well. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and my bibliography is in the description below. Be blessed.